I'm Joel Sharpton, one half of the Articulate Coven, and this is Five Things You Probably Missed in Episode 6 of Interview with the Vampire. Let's talk about vampiric healing. Anne's vampires can overcome just about any physical injury or damage. Their blood can even be used on humans in small amounts to heal injuries or wounds, like the puncture wounds on the neck that the vampire might give that human themselves. This power can be very extreme. For instance, if vampires lose a limb, they can reattach the limb so that their internal natural regenerative abilities can restore that limb's full functionality. Or, if they aren't powerful enough to do that, a more powerful vampire's blood can be used on the wound to start that regenerative process. This doesn't mean that in the case of severe injuries like what Louis suffered in last episode, that that healing process wouldn't still be slow and quite painful. Louis would know at this point in the series that Lestat's blood would heal him, or at least hasten the process. And Lestat has probably offered based on the gift bombing that he does in the beginning of this episode. I think Louis makes Lestat suffer through the healing process just like Louis is doing himself. Speaking of that recovery, this next tidbit comes from one of our patrons. Thank you to Geika, who mentioned in episode six that the book that Louis is reading in the scene when he's recovering is called Love's Coming of Age by Edward Carpenter, a philosopher and poet and gay rights activist. The chapter in question is Marriage, a Retrospect. This focuses on the complexities of relationships. The book itself is an expose on many things, including gender roles and traditional ideas of masculinity and femininity. Thanks to Geika for that comment and excellent catch. Our third tidbit from this episode is Dr. Fareed Bansali. That's the voice of Dr. Fareed Bansali. That is not my voice. He's the personal physician to the deputy prime minister. And I am and not... Yeah. The vampire Louis de Pontelac. Dr. Fareed is a creation of Anne Rice's, who first shows up in the novels in 2014's Prince Lestat. I basically can't tell you anything about Dr. Fareed that isn't a spoiler, so I'll just say that we will see him again, and it is very interesting that he is here working with or for Louis. His name was Magnus. Lestat so far has revealed very little about himself and his origins to his two fledglings. We get the story about his father dragging him out of the monastery when he was a boy, the mention of his mother giving him many gifts, and now this, his maker and his origin as a vampire. The way Lestat describes it is pretty direct from the novel itself. He really was snatched against his will. He really was held in a tower and turned even though he had said no. Once he was made, his maker gave him a wealth of jewels and gold and then jumped in a fire, demanding that Lestat scatter the ashes when he was done. And Lestat did. Magnus was Lestat's maker's name, and the showrunners have already said we will meet him in future seasons. 1973, San Francisco. The flashback that ends this episode is a great one, and it's packed with things to discuss, but we're going to keep it to two. First, the opening shots of this scene are a direct homage to the 1994 film starring Brad Pitt and Tom Cruise. The opening of that film has the camera sweeping across the streets of San Francisco, and then entering the window of the room on Divisadero Street, where Louis de Pointe de Lac begins his interview with Daniel Malloy. Here, we don't go to that room, but the bar, not far away, where Daniel and Louis first meet. The scene ends with perhaps the biggest reveal of the series so far. Rashid, who has been an ever-constant presence in the penthouse in Dubai, is not just a mortal servant or employee of Louis de Pointe de Lac, he is himself a vampire. Which vampire would be telling? So, I'll keep that to myself, unless you're a book reader, in which case, you already know. Either way, come back next week, because we're going to be talking a lot about him. All right, that's your five facts. Here's your lanyap fact. Lanyap means, in Cajun French, a little something extra. Daniel says in the opening, he could fly like Superman? To which Louis responds, Not like Superman. Superman is a fictional character. It's funny because, of course, these are all fictional characters as well. 
Superman from DC Comics and coming in 2025 to Warner Brothers Films once again can fly, of course, without wings or jet propulsion because of his strange physiology as an alien born on Krypton, powered up by the presence of our yellow sun. You might not have known, though, that he couldn't originally fly. If you think about it, it makes sense. The famous saying goes, able to leap a tall building in a single bound, and that, while impressive, is not flying. Superman's original incarnation could leap one-eighth of a mile, either forward or straight up in the air. Superman's first flight in story didn't come in the comics or the cartoons or the comic strips. It was on the radio. In the second episode of the Adventure of Superman radio show from February of 1940, titled Clark Kent Reporter, Superman is flying as the episode opens. Today, as our story continues, we find him hovering with his curious power above a quiet highway in Indiana. A trolley car is just pulling up the hill, and as Superman wheels and turns in curious flight. However, that still isn't the first time that Superman flew. The first time Superman is ever depicted as flying was in 1939 on a British magazine cover. With an on-sale date of August 5th, 1939, issue 772 of Triumph magazine featured this image of Superman flying in space, away from the Earth. Doesn't have a whole lot to do with vampires, but now you know. Superman's been flying since 1939, and the Brits gave him the power. All right. One more episode in this season one, folks, and it is a doozy. Come back next week, or if you're watching this on YouTube, you can get it right now on our Patreon, articulatecoven.com slash join. $2 a month gets you all our videos early and ad-free. Thanks for watching.